Grant's mantra in life is, if in doubt, build a robot. And he's got no doubt that his robo-golfer will give the best of the business a run for their money. Not even Tiger Woods could shoot a golf ball in roughly the same area 100 times in a row, 200 times in a row to test this. So I'm going to build a golf ball shooting cannon. Using compressed air, Grant hopes to shoot balls through the barrel at the same velocity as a proficient human golfer. And that's something they figured out earlier. Before they left Pebble Beach, the team met pro golfer Laird Small to precisely analyze his swing. How are you doing? I'm Tori. Tori, welcome to Spyglass Hill in Pebble Beach. Glad you're here. Using the high-speed camera, they determined that when ball leaves club, it does so at around 150 miles an hour. So that's what Grant's aiming for. It makes it look so easy. Well, he is the pro. We don't want it to be superhuman to give it some advantage at getting through the tree. Time to test its oomph. Dialed in at 40 PSI. Here we go. In three, two, one. And what do you know? The ball shot out at 150 miles per hour, just like the real deal. Now we know how to make foam cylinders. Armed with their machine and a serious amount of balls, the team heads back to the course for the 90% air invitational. I think that is our tree. So the That's myth good. is that a tree is 90% air, which theoretically gives you a nine out of 10 chance of shooting through it and making it through. That's the theory. And to test it out, they're going to start with a tree-free control, like all good science golfers do. We want to see how the tree affects the distance of the ball. So we're going to shoot 100 balls without a tree in the way and 100 balls with the tree in the way and see how far they go. Fire it, Will. Three, two, one. Perfect drive. You're on the green. Not missing a single shot, Grant's machine skips years of aggravation trying to perfect the complexities of the backswing, downswing, and follow through. Last ball, 100. All right. Your cannon's shooting like a real golfer. <laughs> a little hook to the left, a little slice to the right. Their control test is complete. Without the tree impeding their flight, most of the yellow balls landed 500 feet away. Now to see how far they go with the tree in the way. This time, they're using pink balls. So for this myth, which is that the tree is 90% air, what we'll be looking for is 90 of the pink balls will be at the same distance as the yellow balls. But there's a twist. Having assessed his competition from the sidelines, Tori is also going to pit himself against Grant's robot using blue balls. So what are his chances? Come on, it's Grant's robot. It's got consistency. He could make that exact. I mean, I don't really think that Tori has a chance. There's only one way to find out. Here we go. In three, two, one. It's man against machine in the ultimate golfing challenge. Each are firing 100 balls into the tree. But how many will sail clean through? Will it be the 90% that this myth needs? That's 100 balls, test complete. Oh my God. Now to tally up who won. Tori, the machine, or the tree? By counting the pink and blue balls that made it into the same range as the yellow, they can calculate the percentage that were unimpeded by the tree. 27, so. 27 balls made it through the tree. So 27%. 24% on the pink. Wow. So about, well, that's that... about a quarter of the balls made it through. That's not 90% air right there. No, it's not. With such a low percentage of balls making it through the tree, for proponents of the myth, Carrie's got some bad news. Now, the myth says that the tree's 90% air. That should be 90% of the balls. That was only 25% of the balls. That means the myth is busted. Hate to say it, but I beat the machine. He did. You beat the machine. <laughs> you beat the machine. <laughs> You're better than a robot. Yeah. <laughs>